This video is in the Head to Head series, where I show you two patients with two different diseases, and you try to figure out what those diseases are. We're doing fluoroscopy today, and here's patient number one. You can see that there is asymmetric utilization of the piriform sinuses during this swallow. There's a lot more contrast going down the right piriform sinus than the left. Here's patient number two. You can see that there's asymmetric utilization of the piriform sinuses here with a lot more of the contrast going down on the right than going down on the left. Okay, here's a good opportunity to pause this video and see if you can decide what's going on with each of these two patients. Okay, the point of this exercise is that there's two different ways to get asymmetric utilization of the piriform sinuses and you can't tell them apart. These two swallows look the same. I could switch them and you'd have to come to the same conclusions. The two ways that you can get asymmetric utilization is you can have too much flow on one side or you can have too little flow on the other side. How do you get too little flow? You get too little flow if there is a mass in the piriform sinus, so squamous cell carcinoma of the piriform sinus and extrinsic mass compressing on it that can shut one of the piriform sinuses and then all the flow has to go down the other side. The other way that you can get asymmetric utilization of the piriform sinus is, is if one side is too capacious. If you have no muscular contraction on one, flow, on one side, then the contrast will preferentially flow to the path of least resistance. And you just all you have on the other side is normal contractility of the musculature. But if you can't contract the muscles on this side, the contrast will flow preferentially down that side. What muscles are we talking about? We're talking about the pharyngeal constrictors that are innervated by cranial nerve 9 and cranial nerve 10. So if you have abnormalities of cranial nerve 9 and 10, then you'll get preferential flow to the side of the lesion. So here's specifically what's going on in these two patients. In patient one, there is a large squamous cell carcinoma filling the left piriform sinus and forcing all of the contrast to go down the right. In patient number two, there is a paraganglioma of the jugular bulb. It is injuring cranial nerves 9 and 10 as they pass through the jugular bulb, and so you have denervation atrophy of the pharyngeal constrictors in the right neck. So all of the contrast preferentially flows that way. There's nothing wrong with the left hypopharynx. It's just this is the path of least resistance. So when you see asymmetric utilization of the piriform sinuses, it is abnormal. But you can't be sure whether it's a tumor on the empty side or whether it is denervation on the filled side. More imaging is needed. I usually recommend endoscopy in this situation because this is the more common scenario where you've got a tumor there. But you could also make a really good argument for CT of the neck to cover the skull base and the pharynx, or even an MRI of the brain to look for other causes of denervation.